Hello and thank you for watching my video. This video we're going to be looking at in episode 4, we'll be looking at uh, a new part of the up upcoming expansion for the Heart of Thorns in Guild Wars 2. And we're going to be looking at how we can actually prepare for this aspect. And this is going to entice a lot of different things, but it's mainly concerning with materials and the legendary. So, the legendaries are going to be changing, but we're going to come on to that a little bit later. First of all, for those of you who have been wondering, recently I've had quite a number of people ask me, wow, you, you know, your gold has been extremely low. And I, for one, I've actually been buying gems, uh, I've also been buying a few different materials, but I've actually been not sort of making gold the usual way I actually do. Um, and if I show you what I mean by that, I am building up my stockpile of materials. I am not selling these on great and making great swords and selling them. I am not uh, selling every type of a crystal core or molten or glacial or you know sort of pile of vile essence. I'm not selling them. I'm not selling ectos. Uh, I'm storing up. I, I did sort of uh, actually use my orbs to buy something, so that's why I'm not running out of orbs. But I'm saving, I'm not selling any lemongrass, I'm not saving any cayenne peppers, I am not say, selling any omnon berries, I'm not selling any orion truffles or snow truffles, I'm not selling any chili peppers, I am saving my materials. I'm not selling any bolts of damask, um, as you can see here I've got plenty of silk um, and plenty of ore, uh, you know, I'm saving everything up. Why am I saving it up? Well, for one, we have no idea what we're actually the materials are going to become valuable when the expansion launches. When they brought out ascended armor, ascended weapons, silk, which was a pretty worthless material, suddenly became really, really expensive. The same with linen, uh, cotton, and wool. They were all really, really cheap at the beginning. And suddenly, when the ascended uh, weapons and armor came in, boom, they had a huge right spike in value. So, what am I doing? I believe that it's wise to save your materials because you don't know what these materials are going to be needed for your uh, for the next step. What are we going to be needing to craft? Or, you know, what new things are we going to be going to get in the expansion? Uh, for those of you who are not sure, we, we've always had these uh, uh, three items on the uh, ascending materials: crystalline ore, crystalline ingots, and zunlite electro electrum ingots. They've never been in the game. Will they come into the game in the expansion? I'd say it's highly likely, because if they weren't coming in, they'd surely get rid of these slots, because they're, they're worthless. But if they were to come in, what? how do we get these items? You know, are there going to be new materials like Bloodstone Dust, uh, Dragonite or Imperial Fragments? Are Crystalline Ore going to be sort of new drops uh, for, you know, in, in the expansion areas? Could Zunlai Electrum Ingot be the same like Den Jodramore Steel Ingot? So you might need, I don't know, say, if you look at the comparison, you've got the Lump of Mithrilium, it uh, goes into the Deldramore Steel Ingot. You've got the Leather Square, you've got the Damar, so that's leather. Uh, you've got the sort of uh, medium armor, you've got the light armor, you've got the heavy armor, you've also got wood and metal, so that gives you uh, sort of wood weapons and uh, met metallic weapons. What are we missing? Jewel. I think jeweling seems to be the way. With silver, plat, you know, sort of, there's nothing to do with gold. Could that be coming in? Who knows? All I'll say is, I have been stockpiling my gold. I, you know, it, is this. I will put a warning out there. This is speculation, alright? Um, but I have, a, you know, a couple of stacks of gold and some silver. And I, I, I'm just preparing myself just in case something happens, you know, that's going to be launch uh, with the expansion. And all these items are going to come into the game. And they're going to be hard to get initially. And, you know, imagine coming into a, the game and a new exotic weapon, really, really cool. Suddenly you need uh, 250 ruby orbs. Well, they're going to go right through the roof. And uh, this is what I'm doing. I'm stockpiling. I'm also going to show you something else as well. I've actually been raising my karma up. I actually got it down to 600,000 karma by training it for linen from 1.2 million. 
Um, I'm slowly building it back up. I'm not actually buying linen any, uh, much at the moment because, again, who knows what we're going to need to get spend karma on. Laurels, I actually used all my laurels. I'm saving them back up again. I used the chest of loyalty reward uh, to go for the laurels uh, because they're the best um, sort of uh, gold ratio, you know, uh, rather than getting ascended items because you have no idea what you can get out of that. Badges of Honor, I'm not spending any of them. Who knows with the new uh, World vs. World map, we might get some new items coming in. Fractal Relics. We know one of the uh, mastery tracks is going to be in the Fractals. What Are we going to need some Fractal Relics to spend to actually acquire sort of new mastery points? Or are we going to need to buy an item using Fractal Relics? I'd say it's likely. And that's why I'm saving up my Fractal Relics. Uh, you'll notice as well, apart from uh, these three here, uh, the reason being I've actually spent um, my Deadly Blooms uh, because I got an item, a recipe that allowed me to craft something using uh, some dead, Deadly Blooms and they were actually went for quite expensive money, uh, which I'm not going to go into on this video. But these three here are the only three I actually haven't got over 500 uh, tokens in. And that is a particularly poignant uh, particular reason for that if we go over to the dungeon uh, token sellers I'm recommending this because this is to do with the legendaries now the legendary every weapon if you watch my road to the legendary series you'll notice that we always need a gift and this gift of whatever it is uh, be it the gift of light um, I think it's is it this one no, it's the weapons isn't it so if we go to the weapon vendor we can see the gift of Ascalon is used to create legendary weapons. Oh, it's 500 tokens. That is why I have got 500 tokens. Uh, I've got 500 tokens for the Ascalonian Tears, the, the Flame Legion char carving, symbols of Coda, the Knowledge Crystals, the Manifestos of the Matariot. There's only three that I have to get. I'm not going to bother with the Shattered Zaitem because I know for one of them, they're for the Bifrost, and I already have that. So I am looking at the, uh, getting some more seals of Beaterton. So running uh, CM at least uh, six times or five times, whatever it is. Uh, and the Deadly Blooms as well. So for Twilight Arbor, but they're very easy to get. If you notice the PvP reward track I'm doing, I'm actually doing Twilight Arbor anyway. So I'm getting tokens from that. So this is what I've been doing. I'm saving up my materials because I, I'm speculating and uh, I know that the the moment the expansion hits there are going to be certain things that come into the game that will require ectos or will require um, a lot of it, you pretty much uh, redundant materials before then so that's what I'm you know this video is about it's telling you to stock up on your materials and we're going to also talk about the legendaries now the legendaries Really, if I if I show you, we'll start off with the, the, this uh, the first article here. This was a, an article posted on the Guild Wars 2 website. So, a legendary journey. This is to do with a change in precursor crafting. Now, precursor crafting uh, has been in the you know talked about for a long time. We are talking over two years. And there's been various ideas, things that we've data mined that haven't come into the game. It is finally coming with Guild Wars 2, uh, the Heart of Thorns. And I'm going to quickly talk to you and go through a little thing that, you know, what can we do to prepare for crafting our precursor? Because that's what we're going to be able to do. So the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to put some points into the mastery track for creating a precursor. Uh, for those of you who aren't, you know, familiar with the pre the uh, mastery track, I would recommend going and have a look at my mastery, you know, sort of guide, because you know it is it is subject to change. Obviously, it's not been perfected yet, but you will need a substantial amount of mastery points. You, uh, you know, the first track requires one mastery point, then it's two for the next one, three for the next one, five, eight, and thirteen. So you are going to need a lot of mastery points. And for those of you who don't know how many mastery points that is, I'm just going to work that out. It's actually 32 mastery points. 32 mastery points um, to actually get. Well, that's actually for the fractal achievement. I think it's slightly different. It, depending on the, it depends on the actual particular uh, sort of track you go down, how much it's going to be. So it's 32 for the fractals. I wasn't looking at the legendary precursor. Um, I believe 
it is actually around 20 uh, mastery points. Uh, but uh, that will obviously have to be confirmed when it comes out. So we need at least 20 mastery points. And then we go into it you have to do with collections. Um, which you can see here, uh, obviously, you know, we've got the the way it works. You have a legendary, you unlock a legendary collection. Yeah, you can see in this little picture at the bottom here, uh, you have the Energizer. So this is to do with the, uh, going for the Mace uh, legendary, the Moot. Uh, and you notice there's a little picture highlighted. Shove your dance moves to Jenna, Queen of Kryta. So that would obviously mean to go into the instance in Divinity's Reach, go up to the Queen Jenna and dance in front of her, and you'll get this little uh, reward and unlock this little item for your collection. And this is a way that I think they're doing that you have to go around the world, do different things, participate in several activities uh, or, you know, look at get involved in or do certain things. And I, I find it very interesting indeed how that they're developing this new precursor, you know, sort of and what we can do. So the crafting a precursor is going to have a long journey and will they require certain materials well we know if we look at the actual the, the picture there you know we can see it, it's at the top now um that there are different or the hidden objects look very similar to some of the objects in the game now obviously when we see that if you've seen the queen jenna image you'd think okay you need the queen jenna mini well no you don't that's you have to go and dance for her so you don't know exactly what you're going to need from this so what we can do is speculate. So we have to, it says here, the first collection is all about the hunt. So you'll be proving your abilities by fighting fierce creatures around Tyria and acquiring a trophy to show for it. So by completing this collection, you'll unlock a recipe to craft the first iteration of your precursor, which is a non-tradable exotic weapon. Uh, and it looks a bit distressed of uh, the earlier precursor sc um, skin. So the second collection involves doing research, talking to experts and honing your craft, bartering for knowledge, seeking out great minds and convince them to teach you your tricks and prove your ability at the crafting workbench. Well, that sounds like you're going to have to master crafting in certain aspects. I find interesting indeed. Uh, you might also need to craft a complete collection and get a reward for it. You know, like things like we have the Gruul collection or the Hylic collection at the current time. Uh, that's th something that could come into play uh, and that re re results in another recipe and uh, another non-tradable exotic weapon and then we have the different themes you know for the moot which is all about celebrating so again the moot you actually the dancing for queen jenna uh you know you're going around doing different activities concerning your precursor so we can do some speculation and obviously it's going to be tricky at this point in time to you know fully identify what each you know legendary possibly needs or can have but i would suggest you know looking at maintaining a steady supply of your materials uh, and also trying to do as many achievements as possible around the world uh, because you know um, if we look at this other it, you know here it says this crafting system is an account based activity which means you'll only be able to craft each precursor this way once so however all of the currently existing precursor acquisition methods you know basically drops or the mystic forge uh, will remain intact so this is what we can you know this is all about the legendary uh, so if you want to acquire a new legendary by doing this new precursor crafting then this is what we you know we want to look for you know why we're doing a lot of sort of saving the materials because we who knows what you're going to need um again i've already talked about map bonuses in a previous episode but we are going to get new legendary weapons and this is why i've got the dungeon tokens what who knows you know if we get a new staff coming to the game who knows what the recipe is going to be we don't know what materials we're going to need. We don't know if we're going to need... If it's a cool weapon, it might be... Well, this isn't no pun intended, but we might need some glacial lodestones. So, they're really cheap at the moment. Glacial and crystal lodestones are really, really cheap because they're not really used for much. Would they come into play a lot more? Are their value going to go up more? Or are they going to keep them being worthless? We don't know. All I will suggest is that this is the time to start saving your materials go through, go into a sell a, a, a saving mode this should be the time you don't sell everything you want to you know 
be able to when the when the game launch you know the expansion launches after that first week of launching and you've established what you actually need and all the materials you need then should be the time that you should start selling those useless materials because or selling materials that you won't need but somebody else might do you know say there's a new legendary um you know it's called the destination or you know but it's a sword and you've already got bolt but you don't really like the look of this destination sword so you think okay well what do i need who, what what's, what do they need to craft a destination oh they need crystal they need crystal lodestones oh i've got like a stack of those they used to be worth a stack used to be worth like you know 125 gold now it's rocketed to 400 gold let's sell them all yeah this is a bit of a speculation video, so I do hope that you understand that when you know you you appreciate some of the topics I'm covering here. But this is something that it's one of the things that I am doing a lot. I, I know other people are doing a lot, and it's something that you should be doing. You should be storing those materials, storing those tokens, getting ready for the precursor crafting and these new legendaries coming into the game. Thank you very much for watching my video. Please get, uh, comment on my uh, video if you have any suggestions, any disagreements, any agreements, anything you you know you think that I've not covered about materials, tokens, the legendaries that are coming in, and the precursor crafting. Please let me know, and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.